What is going on guys, I'm Mario and welcome back to another video. So uh, today we're going to talk about cylinders and details in cylinders and again how to uh, avoid any kind of deformation or pinching. So this was a question in a group on how to avoid or how to deal with a situation like this where you need a detail but you have a lot of deformation on the surface. And we, if you also check the mesh, we can see what is happening here is that a lot of horizontal edges are trying to even themselves out with a very limited number of subdivisions here on the vertical uh, side and the same thing on the bottom. So we have a lot of uh, edges condensed here and bringing just imbalance in, in this area. And in general, yeah, this is not going to be enough subdivision if you are planning to do any detailing. A similar thing here is basically what's happening is that this edge is sort of like borrowed and pushed a bit to the side for the sake of tightening this edge and again just bringing in balance because this edge that you can see here where my mouse is passing i'm not sure if you notice that but this is the structural cylindrical edge the moment you borrow it or push it to the side the structure is lost and you are going to be this is going to be visible on the mesh so this is going to be our example in its purest form so basically i can explain quickly what happened here and maybe i can just uh, remove here on the side because i don't know Maybe I tried to do it before. Uh, what we did is just, this is just a spin edge. So you just use a spin edge and then you use the parts that you want to extrude like this, let's say, do a small offset and then push it on the inside and this is how you would get uh, this shape. So same thing what we have here on front side. So let me just undo this. Same thing here, what we have on the front side. So this is a flips uh, or spin edge and we have the shape. Once we subdivide it, we do not have any uh, tightening here. So when subdivided, we get this situation. And now this is the example what I was mentioning. So you are going to see this type of deformation simply because this flip or spin edge brought imbalance. You can see that everything is more or less evenly spaced out except this area. Uh, this thing doesn't change, change much even if we try to tighten up the corners. So in this case, we try to tighten these corners. And if we now preview this, it's almost like it's looking even worse than the situation before. So even though the topology is technically correct, we still have some shading issues. So uh, usually what you would hear again is you can just try and increase the subdivision level and do the details then. So same situation, uh, this is a flip or spin edge to do this type of corner. And you can also see it here. And if we check the shading, we can still see that some part of the shading still exists here as well. So what we have here is three levels. So this is without any edge redirection or cordon tightening. This is with redirection and this is again without redirection but double the subdivision. So even with double the subdivision, sometimes you are going to notice the strange shading. But in many situations, it's really going to be the question of with how much can you live with. So for example, if this is, let's say, uh, an object that's seen from this distance, Shading is obvious here, but here it's really less obvious, so this might be just fine. In many situations, this is really something that you're going to... Yeah, it's going to be hard to avoid, but you can minimize it to some extent. And then finally, uh, we have an example here where it's minimized to its maximum potential for the subdivision level. So you'll notice... I'm not sure how much you can see, but here there is still some... Uh, shading but here there is almost no shading visible and they both have the same uh, subdivision level so uh, what i do sometimes instead of flipping or spinning the edge i just use uh, cuts where i want to have well, let's say my panel break so with cylinders it's usually uh, when i were i use uh, let's say 24 to 28 divisions so rarely i go to 32 and this would be some kind of gold mill, let's say 24, 28 subdivisions. In this case, we are working with uh, 28 subdivisions. So instead of using a spin or flip edge, okay, so a different direction. So instead of using this, what I would do is just I would create a cut to the place where I would like to have my detail. 
So uh, what I would do with that is I wouldn't worry right now with the triangle because here's a triangle, here's an angle and so on. So I wouldn't worry about that because once you smooth it all out, it will still become quads regardless was it a triangle before or not. So we're going to use that in our advantage. Uh, one piece of tip here that I can give you is you can still come here and maybe clean this up a bit like so. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, the only way you want to clean it up if this area right here is not super straight. So you will see now that if I try to connect this and if I try to clean it up, maybe sometimes this might be too close to um, the edge, but it's not a big deal. It can be solved later. So again, you can do this as well. Now, this will create a complex pole, but for now, we're not worrying about that because it's going to resolve itself later. And now you're gonna see that this uh, edge is much more, uh, let's say straight. And then we can fix it uh, like this and maybe remove this part, this part. And I just need to bring back this, what it was before. And also now this area, uh, it really doesn't matter if it's from this side because detail is on the inside and we are going to do supportive edge on the inside. So it really doesn't matter as much. So I just want to fix these areas. So that is straight as well. And then we have proper setup for detail. So let's say here to here. And then from here, let's say to here. Actually, I wanted here to here. And just select everything on the inside. Like that. And like I mentioned, uh, it's not big of a deal that it's so close on the outside because you are going to do the offset as a support loop. Uh, you can then hit G to do local translate. Now, the one issue is here on the inside again, but you can just move it aside and do one more offset for another support loop. Bring other supports and there we are. So now, there will be almost no shading visible at all simply because uh, we used uh, so basically what we did here is just we used uh, the natural cylinder subdivided in its states as it is and just used uh, let's say triangle subdivision that it will become quad anyway into our advantage and from this point on so again this is going to be just enough subdivision if you want to do any detailing but it will also be just enough subdivision for this corners to be relatively sharp. So this is just enough. If you really, really wanna have even tighter corner here, now we can do that as well. Just connect this like so, and I'm gonna redirect this one to here support loop. And then you can get slightly tighter corner, even though that's uh, this was just just fine so again if you just check the shading the shading which should be technically also fine without any major issues so this is for some relatively optimal distances let's say like this if you want something that it's uh, shown in render without any strange highlights or deformation so there you have it a lot of uh, approaches a lot of variations uh different results each time but you just gonna then uh pick the one that fits the best for the current situation that you're in. So yeah, uh, this is it for this video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.